Happy Sabbath. This morning I want to share with you some ideas about archaeology, but especially how archaeology and what is the function of archaeology in connection with the Bible. Uh, I want to show a good example of and a good discussion where archaeology support finally supported what the Bible says. Uh, but before I want to to show you what archaeology is. Uh, the literal meaning is two words, archaeos, that means ancient or something from the beginning. And we have also logos, a word, a be, uh, or better, a treatise on the ancient things. This would be a, a literal uh, uh, understanding, a word of a story about the antiquity. This is archaeology, but uh, today, maybe in few words and very simple definition, archaeology is the story of the remnants, physical remnants of the past. And this is very important. What the archaeology check is the physical remnants, not the history. History is uh, written documents for witnesses or people who hear or, or research about that moment, that historical moment, and, and he said what he understood or what he wants to say, sometimes he has some bias, many times the historians has, has some bias. But uh, archaeology, no, archaeology work only with the th physical remnants. Could be 100 years ago, could be 1,000, or 3,000, 5,000 years ago. And this is what the archaeologists are looking for. Uh, buildings or structures, ancestral structures, any uh, run of the human, humankind work uh, in the past. Tools, uh, coins, uh, whatever they can find, this is the, the work. Uh, they try to uh, find out and then uh, to understand the people, how they live in the past. Uh, is the idea of archaeology is to discover, rescue, observe, and preserve buried fragments of antiquity. And you see, it's always connected with physical things. It's, and it's a different area than history. Even they are support each other, but it, it's different, their, their work. And we should have clear this uh, method uh, when we are dealing with archaeology, because sometimes we have a, get a wrong impression about what archaeology, archaeology is. Um, the blessing of archaeology is first that it has provoked a very intensive investigation of many places, not only in Israel, but all that area of the Levant, uh, the ancient Palestine and in many other countries around the world according to their own uh, culture. And uh, the biblical archaeology has supported the idea of doing a better work in the archaeological field. And many of the scholars who brought many improvements along the century, especially the last 20th century, they were biblical scholars like Albright, Kathleen Kenyon, or uh, Ernest Wright. Many of them were biblical scholars that they, because the passion for the Bible, took them to the field and they start to work in this and they improve many things uh, in the place. And finally, they the biblical archaeology has helped to understand the cultural unity in the Levant. Not only Israel, but the relation with all these cultures in those ancient days. Uh, in Israel, what is today Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria. And this, is, this area is what they call the Levant. It's another uh, name for this, all this section in the ancient Near East. 
And archaeology has provided many, many, a lot of information about the cultural and social situation in those days. And let me tell you this. Uh, there are around in Israel around uh, 10,000 places, sites, but only a few of them have been uh, uh, dug. And of those places who have been dug uh, uh, along this past uh, 150 years, uh, many of them have not totally and complete uh, dug. They still have many places uh, still for open in some areas. You can visit today, let's say, Lachish. And in Lachish, they have dug in some areas, but not the whole site. It means, my friends, there are many information is still there on the ground. And many of this information is connected with how they live, the, the houses, uh, pottery. It's not uh, straight connected with the Bible. There are many information that you, uh, uh, but no every detail is connected with the Bible. Few details are uh, straight connected. A name or to find something like this is very, very, uh, it's not, not common to, to find this. So what is the aim of the biblical archaeology? Well, it's give us a very good uh, background of the cultural setting of those people in those days. And this afternoon we will see an example on, on this. Uh, this helps us also with translation and exegesis. They have found many materials, written materials, that today we can compare uh, how they wrote, how they understood some words. And there are some passages in the Bible that now they are better understood because archaeology has revealed some of those words and uh, the context they use those words or, or the, the practice they have on that. And finally, is the apologetic use. And many times we think in archaeology in this way. I, I have archaeology to show that the Bible has the reason. The Bible is true. But uh, yes, we can use to the, even today. And we will see now an example about this, um, how the archaeology has supported the, the Bible. But uh, this is not maybe the main use. The main use is to understand the background of the Bible, the social background, how the people live in those days, what they used to eat in those days, how was their houses, how was the administration of, of, of the place, how was their temples. Uh, this is the, the word of archaeology, and then when you read the Bible, you understand better what uh, is going on there. Uh, this is a short introduction to archaeology. That we have, at least, we can say many things here about this wonderful area of, of research. But uh, uh, let me share with you an experience and a very clear example that is connected with a place called today in Palestine, Kirbet el Makatir is uh, the same place that the Bible called Ai, the city that Joshua destroyed. And it's in that area around 12, 15 kilometers from Jerusalem, in the what we call today Cisjordan, where the Palestinians are living. But you can go there, no? There's, there's no problem. Uh, remember, you can remember the story. Uh, the Israelites, when they first they st stayed in Shittim, and with Moses, Moses passed away, and then finally they moved with Joshua. They crossed the Jordan River, and they put his, his, their headquarters in Gilgal, near Jericho. Then, according to uh, Joshua chapter 6, uh, Israel, after seven rounds around the city, the seventh day, they conquered the city of Jericho. So they wanted, now the next step one was to conquer, to go up. And the uh, Mount of Ephraim, the, the Bible called this area the Mount of Ephraim, to go up and conquer this small city, Ai, because this was the 
this point was some kind of fortress to control the uh, trade roads in this area going here and there. The idea, the military idea of Joshua was to conquer here, to conquer the, the, the middle of the control, the central area of, of the country, and then split the Palestines in two sections, north and south. Uh, but you know the story. They went to Ai and finally they were defeated. So with because the sin of Akan, Akan. So with that problem, later chapter 8 mentioned that finally they came again and they conquered the city of Ai. This is a... Sorry. This is a... The eye, and then usually there was the concept that uh, there was a place called I, and this is Edward Robinson, very 200 years ago. He was the first Westerner who go there, visit all this area of Palestine, and he start to prepare some kind of geography of the Holy Land, and he visit many places, and he follow the names of the places, and many of those places even in Arabic are connected with the Bible, and also he was, has the Bible in his hand, and then he started to identify many places. And he said that he found a place, the name of I, and uh, the hypothesis, well, many times these people, he was only a, a, a soldier, but he said to say, well, this is the place of I, and very interesting what he said, there never was anything here but a church. He didn't say he didn't found anything, only a field and, and, and a church, an old church there. But he identified that place like this. Later, Ernest Selling, another archaeologist, in the first, year, uh, first uh, session of the 20th century, he said the woman of Ramallah, Ramallah is a, a Palestine city there for the Palestinians, uh, near this place. Uh, who were searching for snails, call it Kirbet I. And then there was an idea that that area was the ancient I. But later came a very famous guy, the father, many people consider the father of the modern archaeology. They, many, even, even some people consider him a genius. This guy was brilliant, and he was the one who established many issues for archaeology in, in, in the Holy Land, William Foxell Arbright. And then he visited that area since, he says, since the writer has scored the district in question in all directions, hunting for ancient sites, he can attest the fact that there is no other possible candidate for I than Et Tel. And then he said that the ancient place, the people said, as I know, he said, no, this is not the place. It's another place around two, three kilometers from there. And then all the scholars followed this famous guy, and he was a strong defender of the Bible, but here he committed a big mistake. And then many of the scholars start to say, et tell, this is I, uh, the biblical I of Joshua. Based on that, there was a misunderstanding. Uh, you have here, you have... A Bethel, the mention in the Bible, and there is a small place here, Kirbet el Makatir. But on the other side, there is another place called Et Tel. And this is place that Albright said, this is the biblical eye. So, uh, based on this, many uh, skeptics and liberals who start to work there, they didn't find any connection with the days of Joshua in those days. In archaeology, we call that period a uh, later Bronze Age, uh, around uh, 1500 to 1200 BC. And there was no any evidence. So they start to, to say this evidence showed that the narrative in Joshua is not be taken literally. Because they didn't find any from the days of Joshua, according to the Bible. And this afternoon we will talk about that. Archaeology has whipped out the historical credibility of the conquest of ice as reported in Joshua 7 and 8. 
This is what the scholars start to say. They went to a tell, they start to dig, but they didn't find any evidence, remnants, from the days of the late Bronze Age. We understand that Joshua lived in around 1400 BC. And they went there and there no evidence. The site was alone in those days. So they say, this is not a place. I mean, Hai Masar, a very intelligent Jewish scholar, archaeologist, who wrote a book, a long book on, on, on archaeology. He said, there is no evidence of a second millennium Canaanite city at this spot, Etel, or any other site in the region. This, according to him, constitutes an unequivocal archaeological evidence for the lack of correlation between the story in Joshua chapter 8 with all these topographic details and historical reality. They say there's no any connection. The Bible here is, this is just a myth. This is just a legend. Uh, they also add the narrative. I, I is simply an embarrassment to every view of the conquest that takes the Bible and archaeological evidence seriously. Notice the attacks, because they understood that Et Tel was the place. And uh, this created many, many problems. This lack of any late bronze canonized city in the vicinity contradicts the narrative in Joshua A. They say it's wrong. In short, the evidence shows that there was no city at Ai for the Israelites to conquer. So they say, well, these are our only myths, our legends uh, about this. But uh, when we are careful and we go straight, we, and we compare the Bible, geography, archaeology, we can find a, a different evidence. And especially this work has been done for 20 years. They finished in 2016. For 20 years, uh, more than 20 years, there is a group of evangelicals in America, the um, Associates for Biblical Research. Um, you can find that the, the wayside, there are many good materials there. Uh, they are conservative scholars. They start to work no in et, et tel. They start to work in a place called Kirbet el Makatir. Kirbet in Arabic means uh, ruins. Uh, this place was, they start to work here, and they found that Albright committed a mistake saying that Et Tel was the biblical eye. They say, no, it's not. Et Tel is this place that is two, three kilometers far from Et Tel. They say, this is the real eye of uh, the Bible. And let's see what they found there. Um, and let's consider the text. According to the Bible, first, um, I was strategically important, was in a very important point in this, that area, the hill area of Ephraim, uh, the control, the roots, etc. Uh, what, according to Joshua chapter 7, was near Beth Aven. Another identification in the Bible is that uh, this city of Ai was east of and near Bethel also. You see near Beth Aven and near Bethel, according to the Bible. Another evidence from the Bible itself said that ambush, there was an ambush site between Bethel and Ai, west of Ai. Remember the story, in the second attack, attempt from the Israelites. The Bible said, you can read uh, Joshua chapter 8. The Bible said that uh, Joshua came with his men and uh, they st st stand behind a, a, a hill where the I, people of Ai cannot, cannot see them. They were at the back of the hill and then they, another group came, uh, tried to fight, they fled and then the people of Ai followed them and then the ambush was ready to attack the Israelites. That was the, that was the way they conquered the city. You can read uh, Joshua chapter 8. And uh, <clears throat> there is a military significant hill to the north. And also there is a shallow valley to the north in that area. 
It means all these elements that the bathroom mentioned, you should find a place who had this, uh, this description, um, these ideas. And let's see this place of Kirbet el Makatir. Uh, you see, it's now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Bet Aven, to the east of Bethel, and told them, go up and spy out the region. So, uh, this is a picture today of this, this section of I and uh, here at the back you can see Jerusalem. It's near Jerusalem. And then uh, we have here Kidbet el Makatir. It's here near Bet Aven according to the Bible and at, at the east of and near of Bethel. Then we have here the two places. Kidbet el Makatir is a uh, fit very well with the description that the Bible gives about this place. But not only that, well, here is a, another picture, a aerial view of this place. You have Kirbet and Makatir, and then uh, Beitin here, or Bet Aven, today is the college Beitin, El Bire, that in the past time was Betel, and here is the other place that uh, Albright identified as I. Etel, the scholars, the conservative scholar says, yes, this is the eye, but the eye that is mentioned in the book of Genesis, that Abraham came here. But the eye of the days of Joshua is here, Kirbet el Makatir, all this area. By the way, I have the privilege to work there with uh, Dr. Stripling uh, three, three times. I volunteered there uh, working in Kirbet el Makatir. And it was a very great experience to be there. So when you check the Bible, they cross and they came at this area here in, in Ai, near Bethel. And this is where we have the place. Uh, the Bible says, as we mentioned before, that near that place there is a, a, a special hill where they can prepare an ambush. I, against I, <clears throat> and then this is the aerial view, then Joshua sent them off, and they went to the place of ambush and laid in way between Bethel and I of the west of I. Not is very interesting. Here is Kirbet and Makatir, here is I at the west, and there is here some kind of wadi, what they call a wadi, or a, a small valley, and they, uh, Joshua, put his men in the ambush behind here. These people didn't see uh, uh, the men of Joshua. The other group came this way, and they uh, fight. And later, the uh, Israelites fled, and Joshua and his men was, was, were waiting here in this area. So uh, this place uh, feel what the Bible says for Kirbet and Makatir. And uh, remember that the other description, when you read carefully the Bible, you will find out that the Bible suggests that at the north of the place of Ai, there was a, 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 a valley, a small valley. The entire force was within him. Joshua marched up and approached the city and arrived in front of it. They set up a camp north of Ai with a valley between them and the city. And when you go to this site in... Kirbet el Makatir, you will find out that there is here a swallow valley between the ruins of the, these people have found, these archaeologists, and uh, the place at the north. Then it means Joshua uh, put his armies in this area, and then according to the Bible, he crossed. That night, Joshua went into the valley. When the king of Ai saw this, he and all the men of the city hurried out early in the morning to meet Israel in battle. So geographically speaking, this place uh, uh, match, matches what the Bible says about the descriptions. But there are another, now not only geographically speaking, there are other uh, requirements to find out where, is, where was I, and these are archaeological uh, evidences that show that this is really the place. Uh, first, the Bible said that this city, according to Joshua chapter 10, was smaller 
dan eh, Gibeón. Gibeón. Eh, second, should be a fortification during the late Bronze Age one. Eh, it's around 1400 BC. Then, if you are going to there, you should find evidences for those days. How archaeologists know about those days? Well, archaeologists know the place because the kind of pottery they find. Pottery is very important. And the kind of shape of the pottery, the color of the pottery, they have compared with many places around, along the, the years. And they could say this pottery is from this place, from uh, this uh, era. And, uh, and it's amazing. When you talk with these people, they can identify. They took only a, a shape, a, a, a shirt. And with only this, they could say, well, this is a, a plate, this is a yard, or this is a, a big yard. Only with the, with the handle, they can identify. Even they could say, no, this is labor age, this is uh, iron age, or this is uh, Hellenistic or pre-Roman. Uh, pre late Hellenistic, uh, uh, early Roman. Only with that, they can identify. And then with all these evidences, you could say this is from these days. Not the exact date, obviously, but they could say this is from this century, for, this, for these days. Uh, another element is, according to the Bible, there was a gate on the north side of uh, this city. Then archaeology should find a gate. It's very important should be destroyed by fire, because the Bible says that this city was finally uh, burned out. Remember, this is very important. The book of Joshua only men mentioned three cities that were destroyed, totally destroyed. The other ones, the Israelites uh, uh, took over those cities and lived there. These three cities, Ai, Jericho, and Hazor. These are only three places that were, uh, according to the Bible, totally destroyed. This is very important because there have been some misunderstanding with some people who thought that the Israelites destroyed everything. And it's, according to the Bible, it's not like that. Finally, uh, left in ruins following the destruction. The Bible said that they destroyed the city and, and they didn't rebuild the city. Many times in those days, when an uh, army came to conquer a city, they should destroy the city, kill the people, but later they uh, flat all the area and they rebuild the city right away. Or they took over the city and they start to live there. But no, many times the city was totally destroyed. And this was the case of Jericho and also of Ai. Uh, that was also destroyed. So uh, here is an aerial view of Kirbe del Makatir and the site located in the Benjamin Hill country and destroyed in the first half of the later Bronze Age, second A. Uh, you have here, it's a small city, smaller than Gibeon. Remember, we mentioned this. And the area was only 10 acres. It means that uh, was, uh, 10 acres Kirbel Makatir was only 2.5. So it's fixed, uh, what they have found for Gibeon, and now according for, uh, <coughs> for uh, Kirbet del Makatir. It's very interesting also, and you can visit that place, that at the north there is a Byzantine church, only the ruins. You can see there the, the mosaics and some columns. And remember that uh, one of the archaeologists in the 19th century said that there was a, only a church. He found only a church. And this is the church that he mentioned. And you can visit the church there. When you go to Israel, sometimes you can find many places there on, on, on the ground. Even you can find pottery. It's, it's very common to find pottery on the ground many, many times. So uh, this is the place. And, uh, well, obviously later, the city was rebuilt. We will mention this. And even during the Maccabeans, there was a reconstruction here of this area. It means people lived here. And uh, we were digging in this area. And there was also some uh, <clears throat> places that the archaeologists, uh, Scott Stripling, connected with <clears throat> a small town in the New Testament. 
after the resurrection of Lazarus, uh, the Bible said that he went to a town with his disciples. Uh, many, uh, he suggested that this is place here in the New Testament days. But uh, here's a draw prepared by the specialist on this, where he showed the different elements. First, the city is of the late Bronze Age, is of the days of Joshua. All the evidences there I show this. And second, the gate on the north side here. Uh, there was a gate on the north. And the Bible suggests that there, this gate was at the north area of, of, of the city. So it fits uh, uh, very well with that description. Uh, we have here the, the, well, the west chamber of the uh, gate in those days. Uh, some pictures of the late Bronze Age wall here uh, on the place. Uh, the indication here of uh, different walls first in the uh, second century, and this is from the days of, of Joshua. And very interesting that they found the sockets of the wall. You know, the wall usually were made by wood, and they, they put this on air, and then there was the wall was here, and it was the way that some kind of bench, when the wall can open and close, they found this element, the discovery of the gate, and the upper socket stone also. So uh, these findings were amazing to find this and to see that it was connected with the plate that the Bible mentioned is is amazing. They found uh, some elements that can be connected with a small highland fortress like this uh, roof ruler, the mortar and yog, uh, small uh, <coughs> pieces in that place that are connected with uh, these military discoveries. But especially, and what's amazing, to find this scarab of the fourth century BC. Uh, this is very rare to find scarabs, and you should have a very good eye, because it's very small, the scarab, and uh, you find out it's, 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 it's a blessing for you. you, you feel very happy. When we were digging in Lakish, we, we found, well, I, I, I won, but I didn't, but was an, an, another guy found a small scarab from the 8th century BC. A scarab was some kind of, of, of stamp uh, that they use sometimes for identification, or um, a small thing that they use for the documents. And the interesting thing about this scarab is that it's from a pharaoh from Egypt, Amenhotep II. And here, what is, unfortunately, this is very small. I should find another illustration. <coughs> we have here the description of the different kings, different pharaohs. and. Uh, Amenhotep the second is of the days of Joshua, according to the Bible. It means when they found this, uh, this was a strong evidence that cannot be denied, denied that is from the days of Joshua. All these elements give the support to say that this is the real place of Ai, and this place was destroyed in the days of Joshua, have the same uh, geographical, and archaeological evidences showing us that uh, the Bible was wrong and the identification that Albright did in the past was uh, wrong, but the Bible was right. Another element that was, that was destroyed by fire. And in the excavations, uh, they found uh, ashes. Many times you find uh, some kind of traces of, of some kind of uh, uh, wood that has been uh, burned. And uh, also here they found evidences that the city was destroyed in some moment. And uh, <coughs> uh, that was like this. The Bibles give a, a, an extra detail that it's interesting and can be an extra evidence. The Bible says that 12 elef, 12 companies, 12,000, some people translate in that way. The Hebrew word is elef. 
of men and women fell that day, all the people of Ai um, were killed uh, in that moment. Then it's the mention of women. It was very interesting in the excavation that they found an uh, infant year burial. They usually use a jar. They put the body of a uh, baby inside and they burn this baby in that way. And they found this, the jar broken, and inside there was a baby. It seemed that the baby died and they buried in that place. And um, these are the bones that were found inside. What is, uh, why this, all this information is relevant? Uh, because show us that there were women there. There was people living there. And the Bible, as a coincidence, I don't know, mentioned that there were women in Ai when the city was destroyed. So they found uh, these elements showing us that uh, there are many connections that we can do with uh, the Bible. Notice again, archaeology... Uh, will give some evidences. Archaeology is uh, the remnants. You won't find, very difficult, you won't find a place like this, a rock. Uh, Joshua was here. No, no, you won't find that. It's, it's, or, or something like this. Uh, Abraham and Sarah love. So, no, 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 this is... Uh, no, my friends, the evidences in, in the, in the archaeology is of buildings, of elements, of uh, coins, and then you can connect these, but coins is especially from the 6th century BC and on, before there's no coins. So the, the pottery or some element, then you, you try to connect. Usually it's not common to find writing elements. One of the most important in the last year has been, they found, uh, there are many people who say that David didn't exist. Even some critical scholars have reached that point. But in 1994, in Dan, Tel Dan, at the north of Israel, they found a, a stone and in that stone is mentioned the house of David. Yes, it's a written document. A stone from that day, some kind of, of small um, writing there on the stone. And this mention of the house of David is not common and it's amazing. Yes, there was a house, there was a king, and there was a dynasty of David. And this is a strong argument. But you see, to find elements like this is, is not common in archaeology. So we should be careful. Archaeology is not that you will find every detail. No, you will find general elements that you should connect with the Bible. And Kirbet el Makatir uh, is a good example how some elements uh, you can find according to the Bible and later to find those elements in the excavation. If you find some kind of this scarab, my friend, you are blessed. It's not common to find these elements in the excavation. Uh, and it's very small. That doesn't that they're always shifting all the elements. This is a hard work. At the end of the day, you finish that. You don't feel your arms. But it's, it's part of the work, and they, they find sometimes these small things that are very, very important. Finally, the Bible said that the city was left in ruins following the destruction. And that's the case of Kirbet and Makatir. The city was not destroyed and the Bible said that Joshua burned eye and made it a permanent heap of ruins. And this is the place to these days. What day? The day was the book was written, the book of, of Joshua. Uh, but later, <clears throat> there was found some small city of the Iron Age, the days of the judges, and the days of Abimelech, Tola, Yair, uh, Ruth, maybe 200 years later. And also, there was found some elements during the days of uh, Rehobo and some rest uh, area from the Iron Age. And finally, what I mentioned be before, there, is, there was a small town there during the days of Jesus. Uh, and with all these elements, we can see how archaeology can help to understand, not only to show what we say before, the apologetic use to defend the Bible, the world is right, but always show us how the people live in those days, how they eat, how they uh, ate, how they uh, did their activities. So this is the, the work that archaeology usually provides and helps us understand better the Bible. May God bless you, my friends. Thank you very much.